You come in. What's going on at home? You come in and you tell me that you're lying about What's something. What's going on? Are you oh shooting? I need to get to the bottom are of it. Are you shooting blanks? Why <laughs> yes. are you such a grump? Yes. How am I grumpy? <laughs> you have some rage at me, Andrew. This is a new kind of rage. This is a good defense. Do you think people really have an issue with nepotism or they have an issue with themselves just not getting a role? Hollywood's never been like fair. Why should it be? Well, that's I mean, thing. it's like neither okay. sports. Now, like, this is a. This is a a wild take that the guys don't really appreciate. I think it's sorry. Can I say something about no, Nicole? No, I was in the middle of a sentence. I know, but if we're I know, on. but we're not moving on. It's but about you, this. Okay. It's about this. The Nepo Baby's parents. Mm -hmm. I think we can all agree that the Flagrant Podcast has now gained a reputation for being the show that has no limits and is willing to put their own guests through some very uncomfortable situations. And although Andrew Schultz has been receiving a lot of criticism because of that recently, the show has been completely killing it and the numbers are through the roof. However, their most recent episode with comedian Whitney Cummings has to be by far the toughest episode to watch. The first part of the podcast is them going at each other to the point where it gets a little bit personal. And although it's funny, there's definitely some weird energy going on between them that caused this whole thing. And the second part is no better as Andrew Schultz tries to turn it into a cringe therapy session that doesn't go well for him. And the interesting thing is that a lot of their own fans were not happy with the episode. So with that being said, let's get started. Don't do the like the, the golden retriever outside the car window on the highway face. <laughs> <laughs> just, let's just talk to each other. I love that you just call me a dog and no, like, no that was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Think, let's not pretend that you have become a complete Dork. I listened to your last episode <laughs> where you guys were like, and we're talking about why women are more admitted into college more and that men don't, like, who gives a Why did you guys become such dorks? Who cares? Thanks. Do I, can I say objectively speaking? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. You are annoying. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Objectively speaking, I said that I think you're in great shape. You your are. biological <laughs> age has got to be at least. I, I got upset because you're obviously. Are you in a relationship? What's going on? Um, you're Why do you love look this. at me with these faces like it's difficult? She this can't control is, that. Is, is I, listening hard for you? I, this is what it looks like when you're listening. This is you listening, right? This is you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking. What do I do with my face while the other people talk? She's been hanging out with the Whitney robot too long. That's, That's what it is. the problem. So right away, they start taking shots at each other and making some funny jokes. And if you're familiar with Whitney, you know that she has this high energy, fast talking personality uh, all the time. And Andrew Schultz, on the other hand, you can tell that he had a little bit too many cups of coffee in the morning and was trying to match that energy. Sure, you could say that they're just friends and that's how comedians talk to each other. But it feels pretty personal at some points. For example, when Whitney makes the joke that Andrew Schultz got married at the wrong time, it's pretty funny. Man, Stop being angry because you got married at the wrong time. <laughs> I got married at the right time. My biological age is 64. Okay, I have 20 more good years on this earth. I get married now. By the way, if and you can tell that it rubs them the wrong way because although it's probably not true, and Andrew Schultz is most likely happy with his wife, with his current wife. It's uh, there's some truth behind it, and it's pretty funny because Andrew did get married right before his entire career completely blew up, right after he dropped the special and had that episode with Joe Rogan in the new studio. You no, know, like being a stand-up as a woman, it's not a really, it's not a business. It's not. Yeah. A, it's not a viable. Yeah. Can you tell us how hard it is. Like I'm not saying it's hard. Tell us how hard it is to I'm be a female it's, comic. Like it's, it's that's not, what we love to listen to. That's like, what I'm saying. I think it's hard to be. It's a so fit. tough on the road. No, it's not what I. Said, what are you guys doing? trying to tell you to go back to the hotel? No one knows. It's so different than being a woman anywhere else have... in life. <laughs> Listen, it's tough to be a female. Is this like the comic. new Adderall? Is this like that? <laughs> I miss Adderall. Is this I miss that Adderall. New batch? Adderall. I want I feel Adderall. like you got a wonky badge. No, this I got, feels it, like I'm on a, three zins. You know, LA, the LAPD, I mean, their whole thing is like, you don't really need, like, you know, BB gun I have loaded, but if you have a gun, like that solves half of your problem. I feel like Dog you're having gun. four different conversations with yourself right now. <laughs> you know what? First of all, how dare you? I came in here, I'm being attacked by you motherfuckers. I attacked? I, I, I just sat down, you said I went high. I didn't say anything to you. Girl? Yeah, I mean, it's like you know my mom just me, died. Honestly? Yeah. Don't grief, do the grief mom does, died thing and grief, now we gotta feel bad. But I don't, why, you did that. I feel don't great about it. That. It's a relief. I'm don't glad my do mom that. died. She was a hate, she was a, it would not, didn't love me much. 
<laughs> welcome, yo. Yeah, dude. Yeah, say, welcome my to the was, club, yo. Mom. At this point, they're both ramping up the jokes and getting a little bit more personal, and Whitney is still there trading blows with Schultz. And something interesting to point out is that even though Whitney Cummings is not the funniest stand-up comedian, at least in my opinion, she is still a funny person, and she's a good writer. I mean, she's written for shows and for actual roast shows. So she's good at what she does, and that translates well on podcasts. And as the show went on, Whitney realized that they were trying to be super edgy, which is when she decided to drop her first tactical nuke. By the way, if you like what you see so far, please make sure to hit the like button. It helps out so much to push the video to more people, and it helps out the channel. So I, I really appreciate that. Thanks. And then I was like just attracted to such more like extreme, like intense people, like addicts, like motorcycles. Shit Veterinarians? Like that Vet, well, <laughs> that it, When did you get off? It was a rock climber too. About it was a rock climber don't too. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't you dare do that. It's not a rock climber in the 1700s when we what's, didn't have cables and shit. What's going on? Did, did, uh, I need to know what's you, going on. You, you come on here, on, you on. say you're a big old bull dyke out of the nowhere. Hold on. Right? I'm not a bull dyke. I come was on. A, what, did Emma take down your diehard poster? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what's going on at home, Emma? <laughs> You come in. What is going on at home? <laughs> you come in and you tell me that you're lying about What's something. What's going on? Oh are you sure God. I need to get to the bottom are of it. Are you shooting blanks? Why <laughs> are yes. you such a grump? Yes. How am I grumpy? <laughs> you have some rage at me, Andrew. This is a new kind of rage. This is a good defensive tra strategy. You come in here, you uh, why accuse. Do I even this have is to gaslighting. Be this is gaslighting. Do you learn? And here's the thing. The joke about shooting blanks is pretty savage and pretty ruthless for multiple reasons. For example, it was either that uh, Andrew Schultz told her something in private, in a private conversation, and she actually used it against him in public to, to blast him. Or maybe she was actually making an assumption that the reason why he was behaving that way towards her was because he couldn't have babies and was having problems at home. And you might think that's going a little bit too far, but to be fair, he did call her objectively annoying at the beginning. And I know that's a simple, a minor insult, but that is something that a lot of people say about her online. So it would be like saying to Brendan Schaub's face, hey, I find you objectively not funny. Something. I got a lot of lectures from Andrew. Hollywood's dead. The movie business is dead. It's over. Da, 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 until he starts getting offers to be in movies, in which case it's not dead. I'll move anything around to go to Atlanta <laughs> for two hours to wait in a trailer for five minutes of screen time. Yeah. So now yeah. he used to be like cool. Like now he went into Hollywood where everything is like all whackward. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Backwards and whack. And now all of a sudden he's like, I'm Hollywood guy. Like, uh, listen. You're right. <laughs> By the way, but then You're right. But then I like, did it. I found a way. He's a Hollywood guy, but every movie he shoots is like in Canada, Calgary. <laughs> like, where's this shit coming out, dude? Is this shit for f***ing Tubi? Like, yes! what? <laughs> no, it yes. isn't. Yes. Yes. Well, kind of. Tubi well, got the rights to it. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the green room, in the hallway, and now it's like, save it for the pod. Like, we're monetizing all of our conversations, like, for public consumption, which is great. It's healing a lot of people. People love it. Can There's... I finish before you roll your eyes? Can I finish before I you roll your eyes? I apologize. So maybe it's more of an LA thing because of the number of comics that commit suicide, you know? And it's like after, this will make me cry, after losing Brody. Um. Now, I hate to say this, but Whitney actually has a good point here. Ever since the new studio and, and ever since the special dropped, Andrew Schultz has definitely changed. I still enjoy the podcast, but it's very noticeable. He flip-flops so many times with things so simple as, you know, saying that Netflix is dead and that he doesn't like them and then working with them to something more serious, a little bit more serious, like the way that he handled his new special. He sold the whole thing as him having a special and material that was so edgy and so insane that it, it, they, he couldn't just release it out to the streamers like, you know, Amazon or whatever. So instead, he releases it on his own website and tells you that the content is going to be gone forever, so you better watch it while it's there. Then, a few months later, was fully uploaded to YouTube for free, and it's still there, fully monetized, with no age restrictions. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that it should have some. I'm just trying to point out that the material wasn't that crazy if it's available on YouTube. 
just like that for everybody to see all ages. No, Bro, I'll at, stop you right there. At... <laughs> <laughs> is it on your OnlyFans? Is, is, is it like this? On your do you guys <laughs> want to do this? I mean, why? Why are you so defensive? Yo, you really defensive. have become a woman now that you're a lesbian. Yo. It's, I'm not this a shit lesbian. is bothering me. I'm not a lesbian. You told me you came on here. You are so gaslighting. I feel gaslit. <laughs> I, I, listen, I can't do this. Well, you went two, activist two first. That's pretty dude, good. Remember, Where was I an activist? Remember when you would call me and be like, dude, they totally think I give a about animals and you would, we would have these <laughs> do you remember that like all oh, giraffes oh, no. what a stupid fucking animal I don't get it you, you would call me just laughing and mocking these people remember that no I don't <laughs> yeah. care about it you dated a veterinarian uh, what is going on you dated a home. veterinarian stop what doing it going, you're doing it again but there's every something. time you're in a corner you're so, you project. I'm not, Can I just, we talk about you and the animals? Sure, yeah. At this point of the podcast, Schultz and Whitney have already gone at each other and screamed at each other for like 40 to 50 minutes. And even Akash was just agreeing with everything, every single thing that Andrew was saying and even getting some shots in uh, whenever he could. However, this is when things start to change and the podcast gets a little bit weird. About an hour into the podcast, you can tell that Andrew is visibly tired and, and his mood has completely changed from, you know, compared to the first hour of the podcast where he was full of energy. Obviously, Whitney picks up on this and calls him out and tells him that his energy has died down because Whitney made a comment saying that she thought she was in a comedy podcast, so she was just kidding and then literally left Andrew Schultz speechless. Like, he didn't say anything else. And after that moment is when he completely changes and tries to make the entire thing into a therapy podcast for no reason. It's pretty weird, and at some points, it looks like Andrew is like trying to control her feelings or or direct her feelings in a certain direction. He said talking to you is like downhilling. No, you're going down the hill, and, but you're in a speed wobble. Mm -hmm. So we all just need to take a moment. But I think you actually I'm just slowed pee. down. Take that you take yeah. a moment. We were at the same pace and then you got tired. You got tied tied. You think I got tired? Well, Not you, at all. you wore yourself out mm. and now- Is there another option maybe? <laughs> You decided to switch gears. What do you think? What do you think another option but is? But no, I was just thinking in terms of it. You're being stop, honest. Stop, stop, stop. I want to give you a big hug. Stop. What? Stop. Why is everyone. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Stop, 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 stop. What? You're going to you, get her in her head. Can you say something? Right. Uh, do you listen. see what's happening? Listen, listen, listen. listen. Can, I right can I just take this? Can I just take this? Sir. Can I say, okay. Yeah. But I'm, what I, me slowing down is not a function of me being tired of you or anything. I was just joking. Okay, I thought just... that's what we did here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to make sure the comments aren't too savage. No, no, I just wanted to I just wanted to slow down the pace so that you would feel comfortable. And you can tell that comment got to him because he tried to spin the whole thing around and make it seem as if he was changing the pace and changing the direction of the podcast so that it could benefit it could benefit Whitney, which didn't really change much because he was still interrupting both Whitney and Akash. He was still being the way he was being to uh, Whitney, except now he was more calm. And then he does this wild thing where he asked Whitney a question and as she was getting ready to answer, he cut her off and didn't let her answer the question. Do you think people really have an issue with nepotism or they have an issue with themselves just not getting a role? Hollywood's never been like fair. Why should it be? Well, that's I mean, thing. it's like neither okay. sports. Now like, this is a this is a wild take that the guys don't really appreciate. I think it's sorry. Can I say something about no? Nicole, I was in the middle of a sentence. I know, but if we're I know, on, but we're not moving on. It's about you, this. Okay. It's about this. The Nepo babies' parents, mm -hmm. right? Despite all those things that could interrupt your ability to be loved and love people, you got a lot of people who love you. Well, I think that the key in my best friend, uh, Nikki, don't explain it. Told me, don't explain. If you're gonna it. get your heart broken, don't explain it. Just take it in. Just take it in. But I, I agree. Stop trying to science it. What do you want it. me to say, though? Just Stop nothing. being a nerd with your don't facts. Don't say anything. Just take it don't in. Don't be hear a nerd it. with your facts. But hey. I'm going to say a quote that resonated with me. Yeah, by give some it a second. gay guy. Just give it a second. Just give a, just, we love you. Even if you just took a beat and took it in. You. And look, some fans will argue that every single episode with Whitney is like that, and that is just how comedians talk to each other. I'm pretty sure I've seen all her appearances on the Flagrant Podcast, and none of them stood out like this one did. And if you watch the clips that I've included, you can tell by her facial expressions that she, there was some very uncomfortable moments there. Even at some points, Whitney slipped up and said that she actually brings out the worst in Schultz, and their reaction was pretty funny. They just looked at each other in this awkward moment, not knowing what to say. And you helped them do that. What happened in Calgary? 
Oh, I was cold. Yeah. <laughs> it was really cold. And I think the progesterone that I've been on has been affecting me. There's definitely something up. What is it about it? I don't, I mean, you're just, you're definitely very pugnacious. I think it's you. I think you bring it out of me. Mm -hmm. You make me a little bit more excited. Uh, why is that the worst? No, it's sweet. That was, I'm more sensitive now. No, I think that like, I think that we are, are we have like a very brother sister dynamic, I think. Towards the end of the podcast, she did make a joke about how that was her last appearance on the Flavian podcast. And uh, Schultz took it as if, hey, no, we would actually have you back. But I think she was referring to uh, her not wanting to be back in the show which who knows if that's a joke or if it's 100% true. But what is interesting is that Burt Kreischer, not too long ago on the, on I think it was the last episode or uh, one of the most recent episodes of Two Bears, One Cave, he actually talked about how he was no longer going to be doing uh, Friends podcast after, after what happened to him in Flagrance, in the Flagrant podcast where he got pranked. Again, who knows if that's actually true, but if it is, that would be wild because whenever Andrew Schultz is on the Joe Rogan experience, he doesn't act like that. He's basically like another uh, Brennan Schaub where he just agrees with every single thing that Joe Rogan says and then adds something on top of that. And even though they have been receiving a lot of criticism, they have been completely killing it out there. So why change at the end of the day? All of his YouTube channels are killing it. His uh, special on YouTube has over 15 million views. 15 million views. It's insane. His episode with Joe Rogan has over 23 million views on his YouTube channel. Again, he is completely killing it. So at the end of the day, who cares? Because once again, although the episode with Whitney Cummings had a lot of negative feedback, uh, the episode is sitting at over 800,000 views in only nine days. So it was a success. Regardless, I recommend you watch the entire podcast episode so you can see for yourself. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. It helps out a ton. Um, dislike if you didn't like the video. But that is all we have for today. See ya.